Okay, so this time we are going to create a point of sale or the basic point of sale idea in Microsoft Excel. So when we say a point of sale, it's like a cashier system in stores. Okay, so we have a couple of items here. This area, we have the price, we have the quantity and the amount. For now, we are going to hide these two columns right here since we're not going to need it as of the moment. So I'm just going to right click on this area then hide. That's it. Now we are going to follow the couple of topics here. So first part and the second part. So the first part will deal with cell formatting. So when we say cell formatting, it's like if you wish to color a particular set of cells, you can highlight this area, then color it from here. There you go. That's it. Now if you wish to color the whole or the entire sheet, of cells okay so all you need to do is just to click here this area right here then choose the color that you like let's say if i'm going to choose this part then that would do okay then next is row column and size but before that i'm going to create a standardized uh, a standard look for a particular table so I'm just going to change this part right here to something like a darker one, maybe like this. That will do. Then I'm going to change the borders, okay, to create a table. So just highlight this part right here. Then click here, then choose all borders. That's it. Next is row and column size. To change the row height, all I need to do is just to right click on this area then choose row height so maybe I'm going to estimate around 24 will do click OK that's it next is I'm going to change the alignment of each of the text on the header so I'm just going to highlight this part right here I'm going to change it to center and middle align that's it maybe I need to change the thickness of the text to bold over here that's it up next is we are going to deal with the column size or the column width so for this area or maybe just the amount since we are going to deal with large amount of data here right click column width so I'm going to change this one to around 18 something or maybe it's too much 15 will do that's it okay now up next is cell merging so as you have noticed the basic point of sale is not on the center of our table so I'm just going to highlight this part right here up to the last part of our table then choose merge in center I can convert this one to bold or to make it thicker a little bit okay that's it so we're done with cell merging now for arithmetic formula we are going to compute price and quantity to get the amount so to compute for the amount you are going to multiply price multiplied by the quantity so always start with an equal sign then click on the value of the price use asterisk for multiplication then click on the second cell value which is the quantity by the time you're going to press enter that's the amount okay so 80 times 2 is 160 so if i'm going to change the quantity to 3 automatically it will change I'm just going to copy the formula downwards since we are going to have some sort of a linear formula computation. So I'm just going to click here on the side. Once the pointer has changed into a black cross, you can double click. Then we're done. Up next is format painter. But before that, we are going to deal with number formats. 
so to change the formatting of the price to currency highlight this area choose your currency so for me i'm going to choose philippine peso there that's it if you wish to change it to other currency you can just click here then go to number formats or more number formats you can choose from different symbols here let's say if i'm going to choose the philippine peso ph just type ph then click on php click ok there you go so format painter is like you are going to copy the format on how this one looks and place it in here so click on format painter so since i have highlighted this area i'm just going to brush it over here then we're done now for the total amount same thing i'm going to follow this formatting right here so i'm going to select this area click on format painter then brush it over here up to there that's it to get the total amount i'm going to press equals then type sum open parentheses and i'm going to highlight this area close parentheses press enter that's it that's the total amount of this one for example if you are going to buy this uh, these items of course you are going to pay an amount higher or equal to this so for example if you have 1500 cash all you need to do to get the change is to subtract this one from this one okay so i'm just going to press equals cash given minus the total amount press enter then we're done we got the change we got the cash given and we got the total amount inserting images to insert an image click on insert choose pictures this device then look for a picture from your computer so let's say i'm going to find a company logo over here this will do click insert if you want to change the size do not change the size from here or do not change the size from here but instead you can change the size from the sides or the corners or you can directly type it in here provide an estimate for me uh, since i already know the size of this one i'm just going to type 1.2 enter so this is the size of my company logo right here so i'm just going to place it maybe over here that will do i already have the inserting image and formatting pictures up next is the review comment so a review comment is like providing some sort of notes so for example if i want to give a comment on this change right here maybe you just right click click on insert comment so i can provide just any comment maybe a formula it's just for note purposes so let's say the formula of this one is cash given minus total amount okay something like that so that will do then outside click by the time you're going to hover in here or point your mouse in here you will see the formula next is the conditional formatting up next is we are going to unhide the columns that we have hidden a while ago just by highlighting this area right click and hide that's it in here we are going to put the stocks on hand since we have the quantity of course these items has been taken from our stock room or the warehouse okay so these are the stocks of items that we are selling so let's say i have 100 stocks of chicken 150 for fries 200 for rice 150 for soda Sunday is 100 for the remaining stocks we are going to use the formula 
stocks on hand minus quantity. So I'm going to start with an equal sign here. Equals. Click on stocks on hand minus the quantity. Press enter. There you go. So if ever I'm going to purchase four, the remaining stocks will change. Copy the formula down. I'm just going to put this one in the center. There you go. So we already have the stocks on hand, remaining stocks, and quantity. Now, for the conditional formatting here, let's say your remaining stocks needs to have some sort of warning. So, for example, if the remaining stocks would reach 50, you need to be warned that you need to order an additional stocks because you don't want your remaining stocks to go zero. So all we need to do is just to highlight this area right here. Click on conditional formatting. Go to highlight cells rules. Choose less than. Under less than, just click on that one. So I'm going to choose 50. So that by the time our remaining stocks is going to reach below 50, this color of the cell will change. Click OK. For now, there is no change in color of the cell. But if ever someone is going to order maybe around 51 stocks of chicken, by the time I'm going to press enter, you will see that the remaining star stocks has changed into red, which means you need to order stocks from your supplier now because you are having some sort of critical stocks on hand remaining up next is data data validation whole number so for example if there are instances that you have type something in here maybe let's say you are not going to allow more than 51 orders or more than 50 orders on your quantity if you're not going to allow that one then you are going to provide data validation. So to do that, highlight the areas that will be included. Click on data. Go to data validation or this icon right here. If you are going to see the check and the cancel icon, just click on that one. Choose whole number. So you can put the range of numbers here. The minimum is always one. Let's say the maximum quanti quantity of orders that you can allow for your customer to order is around, let's say, 50, something like that. Then click OK. There. So if someone is going to order 51, by the time I'm going to press, there is some sort of error. Okay, so since we are not allowing it. You can cancel it to go back to the previous one. Next is the error message. To provide a tip to the user, we are going to create an error message to this. So again, highlight this area. Go to data, data validation, this icon right here. Choose error alert. So instead of stop, you're going to choose warning then type a message here let's say um, maybe quantity must be between 1 to 50 only that's it click OK so if ever someone is going to purchase 51 there's a warning quantity must be 1 to 50 only Okay, if you wish to continue, then you're going to allow that person to purchase, okay, those number of stocks of chicken. Okay, so you already have the warning, you have the data validation, and that's it. You have created your basic point of sale using Excel. Okay, so that's it for now.